Hi, my name is Utah. I'm Sydney. I'm Sally. I'm Jason. I'm Eduardo. And today we are going to present to you how have political events ongoing and past in the United States affected superhero media. So uh, World War II was a very big and present um, a political event that affected superheroes. Um, the, the biggest was the creation of superheroes, which could uh, have considered to be inspired or um, created directly because of this event. Um, Superman, who was the first and created in 1938, um, uh, was kind of the time period at the end of the Depression and the beginning of World War II. Um, and it was he was kind of created in a time to up when people needed uplifting, and it was kind of a dark time in America. And after he gained more popularity, others were created like Batman. Um, and then after a while, these superheroes started fighting war in their comics. Um, like one major example is Captain America punching Hitler in the face on the cover of one of his editions, and other things like this, um, where these superheroes were fighting the war before America was. Um, the major demographic for comics was children in America, and um, these comics slowly gained popularity, but during the height of the war, they were the most popular, and this is uh, what is deemed the golden age of comics. Um, so, um, uh, these stories, although people had access to news platforms like radio and newspapers, these comics were informative about the war in a more lighthearted manner, where um, they still had elements of the war, so people could kind of know what was going on, especially for the children. And so these comics really had a pro-American message in them. Although uh, propaganda is kind of a strong word to use, there are comics with um, superheroes and characters talking directly to the audience, telling them to buy war bonds and donate supplies to the war effort. And these uh, comics were also selling ad space, um, which really is uh, was their way of helping the war effort. And so um, although this was mostly solely the writers of the comics, they also worked with the war writers' war board. Um, which was a board of volunteers, although they were uh, controlled a lot and influenced by the Office of War Information, which was a government branch. And so um, it, they inserted a more pro-American message, and uh, the comics books, uh, writers, and companies didn't mind working with them since they felt it was their duty to their country, and also since it was a time of rationing, they got more paper from the government, which their industry relied on. Okay, so the Cold War and the Vietnam War. I will be doing the Cold War while Sally would be doing the Vietnam War. Next. Um, the Cold War uh, was an unspoken war. According to JFK Presidential Library.gov, it was an unspoken war, meaning that it was not acknowledged by both sides and it was not really a war. It was more over a conflict um, between the two sides. Of course, you guys know America with democracy's ideals and Soviet Union with communist ideals. And according to AmericanHistory.com, which is hosted by the National Museum of American History, it lasted from 1945 to 1991. Um, what they sought to do with these comics were to engage the reader's interest because it talked about an ongoing political event. Also, it led to a surge in comics and they took elements from the Cold War and presented them into their books. And then um, this can be seen through the comics of The Flash and The Hulk that y'all are all familiar, familiar with. Um, the, with The Flash, we see that um, in the first edition, according to Wired.com, um, the ro antagonists were robbers, and robbers were robbing a bank, and the bank represented capitalism. And y'all, you guys can see how that contrasted with communist ideals and democracy. And with the Hulk, we see scientific advancements that were going on during that time, and how they're portrayed in comic books. So just to simplify, to lastly say, um, comic books during that time, Cold War comic books, which peaked in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, um, they were playing proxy to the war, and they sought to distribute to, to distribute that information to their readers. So the Vietnam War lasted from 1954 to 1975, and comics were especially popular during times of conflict because they provided a sense of relatability to their audiences, such as in Tales of Suspense, number 39, Iron Man's debut, Tony Stark is captured by the Vietnamese, and he has to work his way out to escape, which provided the idea that failure comes before success, even for superheroes and geniuses such as Tony Stark. Ronald H. Spector, of his a history of professor, a uh, professor history, stated that the height of civil war of the Vietnam War was in 1967 to 1970, and from the Auto Bureau of, of Circulation, you can see statistics were made to form this graph, and you can see how Marvel. Uh, sales started decreasing after World War II, but how they started increasing after the um, 
Vietnam War and Cold War more, were more publicized in the United States and how they spiked in 1968 because uh, comic book publishers were releasing more and more comics that related to what was happening. So characters were often influenced by the conflicts. The Punisher was a popular Vietnam War hero, a superhero, who was created to mirror the Vietnam War in the sense of, in the sense of brutality and dehumanization. Uh, so right, so this was a uh, political issue that uh, lasted from 1954 to 1968. Um, it was uh, created for the equality of many various races in the United States. This led to the creation of many superheroes and superhero comics, such as the X-Men, the Black Panther, and the Black Panther Party. Um, the X-Men was uh, usually created um, by representing the African Americans fighting for equality, um, fighting for equality um, versus the whites, uh, versus white people. Um, in uh, The Root, it talked about how he wanted to make something different. He wanted to create something uh, big. He wanted to uh, show us a big issue that was happening at that time. And he created um, the X-Men with two main characters, which uh, represent civil rights leaders, such as Martin Luther King and um, Malcolm X. Uh, Professor X was one of the major characters who represented Martin Luther King because he wanted to take it a more peaceful way um, to get equality rights, equal rights for African Americans, while Magneto represented Malcolm X because he took more of an offensive and defensive approach by using a little bit of violence in them. Okay, so the Black Panther, uh, the Black Panther comic was created in 1966, the same year when Malcolm X, a humanist activist, activist, was assassinated, and the same year when a rebellion in Los Angeles took place against police brutality against African Americans. Now. Uh, Stokely Carmichael, a humanist activist, also in California, gave a speech at UC Berkeley, uh, and soon after, the founders, who are uh, Huey Newton and Bobby Seale, created a major African American political party, with its symbol being a Black Panther, and which is now known as the Black Panther Party. So the Black Panther Party was different from all other parties because they believed that the F the nonviolent efforts of Martin Luther King had failed, and that they would take a more direct approach, they would use violence if necessary to get what they wanted. And so this, they also preached for a revolutionary war, which actually led to their downfall, because since they preached for this revolutionary war at the time of the Vietnam War, um, the FBI started to investigate the Black Panther's activities and soon after it was shut down. But that is not to say that the Black Panther Party was short-lived and unimportant, quite in the contrary. See, the Black Panther Party stood up for everyone's rights. Even though they preached for a revolutionary war, and even though they were major as for African Americans, it doesn't matter who you were. As long as you were oppressed, you could be Asian, you could be Jew, you could be Hispanic. It doesn't matter. As long as you were oppressed, they would also be willing to fight for you. According to um, uh, Nelson, a researcher of visual culture, he says that the Black Panther Party was trying to create something similar to Wakanda, if not the real Wakanda. They weren't separatists, but they also knew that if African American communities were going to survive that and thrive, that they needed to create their own resources and be self-sufficient and self-reliant. It, it is this theme that is shown not only in the comics, but also in the Black Panther Party itself, for fighting for freedom and equality for everyone. Okay, so there are obviously two sides in having mostly war-based comics. The positive sides were that the comics were informative to their audiences, which were mostly children. So children had an idea of what was going on in their country in such an important part of their history. And also, there was a lot of increase in revenue for the superhero public, for the comic book publishing companies, because the comics were really popular with um, people of America because they boosted morale and they were talking about something that was relevant to the current situation. But there was also negative impact, and this included the um, amount of violence that the comics portrayed.